So the second challenge that I'd like to talk to you about is inadequate support to meet the patient demand for care. And here, all of the solutions fall under the umbrella of sharing the care among the team. And the most uh, effective models that we saw had two or three clinical assistants, nurses or MAs, per physician to share that care. And that allowed a more expanded rooming protocol. So instead of being an escort, the nurse or the medical assistant was much more deeply involved in each patient's care. And it also allows for a lot of between visit care, health coaching, uh, care management, and panel management. And um, to illustrate that change in culture uh, from a physician-centric model to a teamwork-centric model, I wanted to share with you uh, a little bit of Fairview. Culture is really critical to teamwork because we're changing the way that people are going to be working together. The old model is that the physician or the provider really runs the show and tells everybody what to do. And, and unfortunately for the physician, that means that they have a huge backpack of work to do. So the idea is, is that you're bringing these folks together who have really been far apart before into a team to take care of a specific panel of patients. At Mayo Red Cedar, David Eitram and his two nurses have developed a new model of nursing. And with this new model, um, they too have moved from a physician-centric model of, of care and responsibility to a team-based model of care. He works uh, in a chronic, stable relationship with his two nurses every day, the same nurses. And the nurses then have taken complete ownership of several aspects of the care. They're in charge of immunizations, cancer screening, they do much of the lifestyle counseling, they do post-visit instructions for the patient, um, and they found that with this efficiency, they've been able to offer 25% more appointments to their patients, which means their patients have greater access, so there's more continuity, and it also means that he can take care of a larger number of patients. And they also feel that the day is less harried. In fact, I learned last night that one of the reasons that David was motivated to do this was his nurse went on vacation and she didn't want to come back. Um, so I had talked to, when I was there, um, I'd asked one of the nurses, well, what's different for you in this new model of care? And she said, well, now we get to, to get to have lunch. And I think if getting to lunch is such a big deal, it tells you something about the overworked, stressed um, nature of primary care. So Martin's point, uh, the nurses uh, and the medical assistants there also have a much deeper uh, role to play in the care of patients. And in this video, we'll be seeing uh, a nurse who does some agenda setting with a patient. She does some initial lab review. The patient has had uh, her lab ahead of the appointment as well, allowing that to happen. We'll see health coaching and then a warm handoff to the physician. Charlie, uh, my name is Molly. I'm one of the registered nurses here, and I'm going to get you ready to see Dr. Kavenko today. Uh, you've come in today to follow up on your diabetes, your blood pressure, and your cholesterol. Uh, did you have anything else that no. was on your mind today? No, I don't think. Uh, you had your A1C done for your diabetes. How do you think that came out? I'm not so sure. Um, I've been trying to, you know, keep a hold of my sugars lately, but you know, lately it's just been so stressful. So. I'm Mm, so stress is kind of big for you. Yeah. So you wouldn't be surprised to find out it went up from 7 to 7.7. .7. One of the things you've been taking is metformin, 500 milligrams once a day, and that's a pretty low dose. So we can, we do have room to certainly increase that in, and until your stress maybe can be managed a little bit better. Um, what are you, how are you tolerating that? Is that working okay for you? Uh, not taking it very often. Oh. It, it's, you know, it's pretty expensive. Oh. I don't have insurance. So. Oh my. I kind of go over some of the things that we want you to continue to do for preventative measures with your diabetes. And I see you had your eye exam in November, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And your eyes were great. You didn't have any retinopathy. And we also checked your urine for uh, microscopic protein in March. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is about a year ago. We should uh, probably do that again. We've uh, chatted before you came in that uh, she actually doesn't have insurance, so her metformin she hasn't been taking every day. She's only been taking her 500 milligrams every other day to make it stretch. So I told her that I would help her apply for some free medication where she doesn't have insurance. There's a good chance she will qualify for po possibly. I can't say for sure, but she may qualify for some free medication. So the third challenge that we found was vast amount of time spent documenting the visit, uh, documenting the care, um, and complying with regulations and with administrative requirements. And in fact, I think many of us feel 
that we can spend as much time or more documenting the care as delivering the care. This is a physician in Alaska. I used to be a doctor, now I'm a typist. I think that is a very widespread uh, feeling among physicians in primary care. This is a, a physician in California. For me, the final straw came in 2007. We now had to type our progress notes. This added one to two hours a day to an already too long work day. I quit. This is from a patient during a site visit just a week ago. I come to my doctor for an examination, but it seems all he wants to do is examine the computer. This is from a New York Times blog post. I really like my doctor of over 10 years, but I rarely get to talk with her face to face anymore. When I'm talking, she is typing. It annoys the hell out of me. Now many of you might recognize this picture. It's the doctor from 1891. What I see is a physician giving undivided attention to his patient. This might be the doctor in 2012. And that patient may be saying, may I have your attention, please? So vast amount of time spent documenting the care. And the innovations here include scribing and assistant order entry. This is Dr. Peter Anderson. And he works with uh, three staff, one MA and two nurses, typically, uh, in scribing. And he uh, has been doing this for eight years. He recently closed his practice and now works uh, helping other practices, including 26 practices in the U.S. Army, uh, adopt the same model of care. This is Dr. Kevin Hopkins. He's at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, Dr. Hopkins and his two MAs spend a couple of days uh, with Dr. Anderson uh, learning the model, brought it back. Now he's been doing the scribing model with his staff for the last, two, for the last year and now we'll be ex extending that to additional physicians at the Cleveland Clinic. This is Dr. Mary Parsons. She's been, using, been developing and working in a collaborative care model with scribing since 2005. One of the things that I'd like to share with you is that six of our study sites have some sort of collaborative documentation that includes the scribing. Uh, but it's much more than scribing. The assistant is really integrated into the care and shares ideas about what's going on with the patient. Um, and the results have been remarkably similar. Generally, a 20 to 30 percent increase in access or productivity, increased patient satisfaction, increased physician satisfaction, increased staff satisfaction, higher quality metrics, and the doctor going home an hour or so earlier. So this is the Office of the Future at uh, Quincy Family Medicine. And um, they put together a video that we would like to show you. And as you watch this, I want you to watch. We'll first see the medical assistant doing some of the history of present illness. Then she'll give a mini huddle off to the physician. They'll both go back into the room together. And you'll notice there's no desk. There's no impediment between the physician and the patient. His attention is on the patient. and then. He'll explain to the patient what the orders will be, what, what the steps will be, and while he's doing that in real time, she's putting in all of those orders. He doesn't have an additional 15 minutes of work to do after the visit to record the visit or uh, put in the orders. Stuffy nose as well. Mm -hmm. Sore throat. Yes. Right down the middle. Or more one side than the other. Right kind of out there a little bit. Right. Tonsil area. Okay, Dr. Kim, we have the next patient. She's had some cold symptoms, right ear pain, lots of drainage. She's felt feverish at home. Today she does have a temperature of 101. Okay. She missed a couple of days of work. It's been going on for about four days. All right, let's go talk to her. Hi. Hi. So I understand you've been having some cough, fever. Yeah. Anybody else around you say like this? My husband had it about a week ago. He's still coughing. So. Okay. So she has a right lower little crackles and the uh, rest of the heart exam is normal. Have a seat. Okay, so we're going to work some chest x ray for you and I'm going to start on antibiotics today. Are you allergic to anything that you know? 
The only thing I am allergic to is Azo Azo Anderson and Cody. Okay, Cody. gotcha. So we'll start her with amoxicillin, uh, 875, one tab KOBID for seven days and chest X-ray. We might need to do some blood work to make sure that this is not a severe infection, so we'll lower some blood work. CBC with the differentials and CMP, all right? And hopefully the medicines that we give you will make, start to make you feel better. Right. I'm tired of feeling bad. So we identified that scribing was actually the most powerful innovation of all the many innovations that we found.